Hey gang, did you see what we had up there? Yes, it is Wednesday. It's after work time. It's the Wednesday before the Masters. How exciting. They're going to tee off tomorrow. Hope Tiger does well. Well, even more importantly, it's hump day. And that means it's happy hour for the dentist in the know. You saw our great little logo that we had up there before. We want to thank you, Optics, for sponsoring this and other programs for us. So we now have one of our educational partners. You'll be meeting more of our educational partners along the way. And Chad's going to talk more about that. But I'm excited. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. I want to bring my compadres on, Chad and JB. Pop yourselves up on the screen, guys. It's a big night. Let's just leave JB down there for a while. I'll leave JB down there? Mm -hmm. We can do that. Yeah, let's just leave her down there for a while. Yeah, we're really the good-looking ones in the group anyway. Hi, JB. Hi, JB. <laughs> How you doing? I was fine until you guys were mean to me again. Yeah. Yeah, and then, here's the best part. She's an administrator on this group, so she could have brought herself in at any time. I can? Yeah, all yes. you have to do is hit the show oh, button. You didn't even know that. I don't yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, I now, for next go week. ahead. Now that everybody's here, I can officially say it. Welcome to Dennis in the Know. This yes. is your backstage pass to current trends, politics, and education in the dental world. It's live and it's over one of these. I had, because Q Optic sponsor today, this is purely coincidental. I know it's going to be hard to believe, but they came into my office today and I'm getting fitted for a new loop. So I'm really excited to kind of walk you guys through that journey. First appointment visit was super easy. So um, I'll keep you posted. Uh, wait till you see how efficient their customer service is amazing. Yeah, like, I can't are, wait. One of the best things I've ever done was go to Q Optics years ago. And like between how light they are and how great the service is, I used to send loops off to get repaired or, or whatever. And it would be literally sometimes weeks before oh, wow. I'd get them back. They turn these things around so fast or just send you whatever you need so fast. Um, I just, I just won't go anywhere else. In regards to what we've got tonight, we've got a fantastic sponsor educational partner that has joined up with dentist in the know you heard jennifer talk about q optics i'm going to talk about q optics jeff's going to talk about q optics we're we're going to you're going to hear us all talk about it but the thing is is that the three of us believe in this product and that's why they're an educational partner of ours and they're not just loops so we're going to talk about a bunch of things throughout their partnership with us but tonight we're going to talk just about loops i've got three pairs of their loops i've got two set or three sets, two different magnifications. I can't live without them. They're offering a deal to our group, $100 off the loops and $200 off the light set. That will be posted tomorrow. But in the meantime, if you don't know Q Optics, before we go into JB's news and before we bring our guest on, just sit tight for a second while we're going to do a quick little video of what Q Optics is all about. So hang tight for just a second here.
So as you can see, it's a great pair of loops. I promise you, you won't find a more lightweight, more ergonomic pair of loops for the price point. And I think Jeff and Jennifer will both agree. Um, we just wanted to share that with you. And once again, send a special thanks to our, our educational partners, Q Optics. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Jeff. And yeah, uh, uh, no, I, I'm so excited. And I just want to throw out there because one of the things you know, that that we wanted to be a part of this show was the fact that we are bringing honest, vetted information to all of you. And so one of our struggles has been, okay, you know, obviously we would like to have some sponsorship for the show to offset the cost of doing everything that we do. And in doing that, though, we never want to sell out. We never want to be people that are just pushing products. We want to only bring you educational partners that have been vetted, that have been used by all of us, that have been used by our colleagues, that we know the companies, we know the customer service. So that's just really important to us. And, and that's who we are. We will always uh, be bringing you partners and, and sponsors that, that we fully believe in the products. So with that said, we have an incredible guest tonight. I'm really excited to have her on here. Um, I got to start by saying that when, when Mike Picos chimes in on social media to say how talented you are, um, that's a pretty big compliment. And um, I just thought that was amazing. Uh, we do. We have an incredible periodontist with us. Jennifer Dubrow is with us. Um, she is everything and more that, that uh, Mike Picos uh, says she is as far as being talented. She's going to be chatting about everything she's involved with. And she is involved in so many things in dentistry, uh, just doing great things for the profession as a whole. So before that, JB, we got a couple of news items, I hope. We do. Right. I'm going to start with the sad stuff first and then get less sad by the end, but never happy because that's pretty much the news. So in it's that chill. That's where Jen comes in. She's going to come in and take the show up where it should okay. be. The happiness right. level will exponentially we'll increase. I'm basically the inverse of a hype man. Like most people put somebody on that's funny and like gets the crowd jazzed up. I'm the opposite of a hype man. Okay. It's not good. The first story is, and it's only related to dentistry, and actually Howard Ferran posted it today, so I had to click on it to look into it. There was this family in Swiss, Switzerland, and uh, they were French descent, and they did a, this is very strange, a mass suicide event, jumping out of a window, and all five of them decided to jump like sequentially out. Well, one of the women in that group was a dentist and one was an ophthalmologist. I mean, these were very intellectually high people. It's a very odd story. There's some strange nuances there. Uh, it does go to, again, highlight just mental health challenges, I think, currently. And then coming out of COVID, there's just isolation and some other things. And they sort of alluded to that in the story. But it became dental news because one of the individuals who participated in that was a dentist. So that's the low point of my hype story. Uh, there are two good things coming up. So um, it's probably been almost a year ago that we talked about a, um, a bill that was being introduced called Lasting Smiles Act. And the bill was specifically for individuals born with congenital abnormalities, oral facial. So for instance, you're missing seven and 10, which I can relate to, or uh, you suffer from systemic diseases that also translate to a lot of missing teeth or oral facial abnormalities. And a lot of times they fall under the dental umbrella and then they don't get covered because they're pre-existing conditions. There's a lot of momentum coming behind the ensuring sm the lasting smiles act. Um, and so it looks like uh, there the um, it was passed by the House just yesterday, no, two days ago. And it looks like there's a lot of momentum for this. And it would basically require insurance companies, dental included, to cover 
congenitally missing things or congenitally or, you know, congenitally given abnormalities. So hopefully that will continue to move through. There's a lot of support in organized dental world to get that passed for our patients. Any that questions? Like a, I mean, I, I, I can't disagree with that. No, I think it'll be interesting to see how medical and dental will figure out that nuance. Right. Like, you know, will it become a medically billed procedure or will it become a dental build procedure? So I don't know all the nuances quite yet of, of all of that. So it'll be interesting to see how that gets sorted. Um, the last thing that I wanted to bring up tonight was um, there was a new bill that was introduced late last week called the Dental and Optometric Care Access Act. Um, and it was actually presented by Joe Manchin and Kevin Kramer. So it Kramer, so it has bipartisan support. Um, and the general uh, disclaimer of that is that it would ensure fairness in doctor and insurer agreements by prohibiting insurers from setting the fees and network doctors may charge for services not covered by dental and vision. So a lot of states have this provision already or they've passed it on a local level. For instance, I know North Carolina passed that where um, you can charge your fair and usual fee for a procedure if it's not covered by insurance companies. There's been some interesting language. Maybe we can get Travis Campbell to chime in. Interesting language coming back out of the insurance company that says, yeah, well, they're tweaking the interpretation of the law to say, well, we cover that. We just don't cover it for this patient for this reason. And so then they're saying you then have to honor the write-off and, and do the reduced pricing. So I think this, this bill will, number one, more nationalize the overall uh, language around non-covered procedures and how they're, they're covered or how doctors can charge for that if they're an in-network provider. Um, and maybe give some clarity on if it is not paid for by the insurance company, um, it is available to be charged at whatever is a regular fee. So as we bring our guests on, I'm going to ask you three, because we've all been in this situation maybe two weeks ago. When you're presenting with like three or four people and you're the dumbest person in the room, what do you do? I don't know. Tell us, Chad. You moderate. <laughs> You moderate. Sorry. You moderate. So you moderate. That's how I met Jennifer. I was presenting in a group with her, Drew Ferris, and Amanda Say. And yeah, trust me, I was the voice behind the operation because when Jennifer would say something, I'd just be like, I I I completely have to concur with Dr. Dubrow. I, I just encourage Dr. Dubrow. When Amanda would say something, I'd say yes, whatever Amanda said. When Drew said something, I was like, yes, Drew, Drew is on point and that's good. But no, that was how I met her. She is an amazing woman. I, you could read her bio on here, but I'm going to tell you that getting to know her over the past few years has been awesome. You meet people and you give them your number and occasionally you hear from them. I hear from Dr. Dubrow every holiday, she sends an awesome message. Occasionally she'll just send a how you doing message. You go on a Seattle study club message. Just an amazing person, an amazing mom. Um, I can tell she's an amazing wife. She was a cheerleader at the University of Georgia. Oh, and she just happens to be a pretty damn amazing periodontist too. So Dr. Dubrow, welcome. Hi. Hey, so all right. Happy to so be before we go forward, because I kind of feel a little silly now, I got to ask, how do you say your last name? So I married it. So it's my husband's fault. We'll go there right. first. He always says it's like eyebrow. So do brow. Okay. So I am correct. You are, but I say, call me whatever the hell you want to call me. Short hair okay. doctor, you know, Dr. Well, D, Jennifer, I, you're good. You say things for years and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, am I saying so it right? I was mm -hmm. wrong with do bro. I've always said, I was thought it was do bro. So Hampton, care, Jeff. you know, it's so funny. Hampton's my son's name, right? And so nobody can remember Hampton. So it's like Hamilton, you know, Harris, whatever it is. So he's just learned to kind of say, say nothing because he, you know, say anything because he's learned from us. So you call me whatever you want to call me, Jeff. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just make sure it's more than four letters. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jennifer, I, you've got an amazing story. We've got a lot to talk about tonight, but 
tell us about your journey in dentistry and how you landed where you're at. Well, first and foremost, I want to cheers. I'm raising my glass to all of you amazing individuals and all your dinks out there because what a great group. You know, I Jen, love your glass. Hold on. What is this? Oh, well, can you guess what happened this year? Can you see what it says? Oh, big, I, big year. 40 awesome. AF. 40 AF. That's awesome. I so that. I had so many fabulous friends that couldn't make it in this year. So they gave me sent so many like awesome. little boxes. So yeah, that was one of them. But um, no, it, it, with, before we say anything, I just, I want to applaud each of you because you really made the most of every moment when, you know, things happen. It's all about pivoting and knowing how to respond and what you guys did with Dinks through um, the pandemic and what you've done for your group and your cohorts and your colleagues is amazing. So kudos to y'all. Thank you for doing this. It is, you know, I know y'all were giving JB like the hard time about going kind of down with the emotions, but you know what? That's what this has been, right? That's what that's this the reality. Been. And, and thank you for saying you know, that. Thank yeah, you. I mean, absolutely. No, it's the truth. And I'll tell you, um, when I do tell my story a little bit, Chad, you guys really epitomize what it's about. You know, I, I've said through what my story is going to share, but where we are now through the pandemic and coming out through adversity comes opportunity. And what you three have done is embrace the opportunity. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, cheers to 40 AF and you. Um, <laughs> cheers. Do you remember that birthday, Jeff? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was um, just aught, aught. <laughs> yeah. Are we talking about your age now, Jeff? Is that where we're going? Yeah, that pretty much it's happens every have. show. Yeah, yeah. It's literally all I have. Experience, like, not not like age. Is that what it is? Thirty-eight. That's your upcoming. Thirty-eight. Your upcoming yeah. birthday. Well, you know, thirty-eight was a was a good year too. Um, you know, but that's three years ago. I can't remember back that far. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a good one. Tell. Yeah, three plus a few. Right. <laughs> now, I may have too much fun with y'all. I'm gonna ask to get the invite so I can just banter back and forth this morning. Yes. <laughs> I really think we could have a green room event. We do need to have a green room event. I love this idea. Would be yeah. awesome, but it cannot be recorded. That's where the news is going to come from, Jennifer. That's right. And we'll do a master's thing where you have to drop off your phone somewhere. Like it is meant to be. <laughs> it is what it is. It's Vegas, baby, in the green room. So I, I want to ask you. Um, but she was going to tell her story. Yeah. This is something I don't know. Chad, what did Chad's voice go out for me or for all you too? <laughs> I love y'all already. You're amazing. Yeah. No, Chad, your voice went out. So I think something did went wrong. Did he get a there, gnat? But... Did he huh? get a gnat? I know. You need to <laughs> drink not water. Not <laughs> virtually, Chad, I'm and sorry. Like, the camera. Sorry. A gnat. I want to ask Jennifer about, about um, teaching at Picos because when, when a Michael Picos lauds your your talent as as an implantologist as a dentist i mean listen that is that is the cream of the crop when it comes to grafting and implantology i mean i have so much respect for mike i mean even with everything that he knew he came out to coice and he just wanted to really understand all the occlusal principles and and he's just always taking it to another level. So when someone like that really says how talented you are, I mean, that's something. You've made it, right? So tell us a little bit about teaching there and how that happened. Jeff, thank you. I mean, I, I'm honored. Listen, number one, I'm honored to be here with you guys, like I said. And I'm, I'm, I'm really honored by what you said. Um, it kind of comes full circle. Chad, you asked such an... Uh, a loaded question, but such an amazing question. And it goes to what you're saying to Jeff, because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everybody that's helped me. And I mean that I had, I had to be a, a sponge very, very early on. And you guys have all kind of had to pivot in different ways. I know, I know a lot about a lot of your life stories and mine is one that I hope nobody ever has to emulate. And if you are in this position, I'm here to help you. But um, I don't know anything besides dentistry, y'all. And I'm not, I'm from Alabama, so I got to throw in a y'all here or there. I try to say you guys, but it just doesn't sound natural. Y'all's fine here. Y'all are good with y'all. We're all good with y'all. Yeah. Um, so my my mom has always been in dentistry. She taught dental assisting. She taught dental hygiene. 
and she still sells for a dental supply company called Atlanta Dental Supply. Mm-hmm. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you remember Health? Do you remember Health Q? Healthco, either of you, Chad? Yeah, Healthco. Yeah, for sure. Health I mean, it's been like 40 plus they years. They had a store in my dental school. Well, they, yeah. Yes. Were you still there when they had the store there? Charleston, yes. Yes. Um, and we're, so, at, we're MUSC alum, by the way. That's why I loved you from the beginning, Jeff. Exactly. Right? But, uh, but you know, it really hits close to home to what you're saying because even MUSC becomes part of, a huge part of this picture, right? So um, my mom, as I mentioned, sold cells and continues to sell dental supplies. My dad was a practicing periodontist for over 30 plus years. Oh my gosh. And yeah, Chad, you mentioned that I cheered at Georgia, but what really was the most important part was my dad was my biggest cheerleader. I mean, truly. And when you have that person in your life, it is so impactful. I'm boring Chad already, so he's out. He's like... No, not quite no, no, he's a lightweight. He has to pee a lot. He probably has to pee. <laughs> no, but no, but um, if we're I mean, being honest, right? Hey, listen, you gotta always be honest. Yeah. Um, oh, but, no, wait. He's got a surprise. He's back. He may have a Foley cath in y'all. I'm not no. sure. You washed your hands. I actually heard something and I went to the window and we have a little birdie that kind of made a trip into my window and then kind of made a trip to the ground. So I was trying to figure out what was going on outside my window. Sorry, guys. Did you do CPR? Yeah. Do we need to save the bird? That was actually what it was in his throat. It wasn't a gnat, JB. Yeah. Carry on. Sorry. Okay. It's That's what it was. Incident. You actually get a bird in yeah. there. Oh my God. Y'all are hilarious. I can be on forever with you guys. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but no, Chad's yeah. Empty, yeah. not empty. What's that? His bladder okay. is Chad's empty, not empty. Go. <laughs> yeah. No, so. Um, unfortunately, my dad, during between my first and second year of my residency, I was at UAB, so I was in Birmingham already. He had two periodontal practices. So one was an hour north and one was an hour west of Birmingham. And perio residency is three years. Um, and so he actually passed away suddenly between my first and second year of my residency. Mm. And Jeff, he passed away at MUSC. So they did a very special procedure there. Mm. Um, so he kind of went back home, if you will. But yeah. um, with that being said, so he had, do you guys know uh, Crystal Hamburgers or White Castles? Yeah. White Castles, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're familiar, right? So when wait, he passed- wait, do not equate Crystal with White Castle. Touche, you're so right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But when he passed, and I'm gonna take this in an upbeat manner, just like JB did in just a minute, but when he passed away, um, he passed away, he had two, two periodontal practices, he had eight crystal hamburgers all over the state of Alabama. And so we were just left like the holy shit, what are we about to do? Right. What's happening? And it wasn't a woe is me. It was like, let's pick everything up, you know, and rise to the occasion. And now everything I do, I do it for two. And there's not a day that goes by y'all that I don't see a patient in my practice that my father did not have an impact on. Mm. I love so, that. Really? Yeah. Really amazing. And so Jeff, to answer your question, when dad passed, I had amazing, amazing individuals reach out to me. I'm so blessed. Our whole family is so blessed. Steve Bogan from Bio Horizons, presidency of mm -hmm. Bio Horizons, um, Mike Picos, they all reached out and basically said, what can we do? My dad was a pioneer in implantology. I mean, he was the one that was placing the blades, placing the subs. So mm -hmm. like I said, every presentation, I was the one watching just like my son Hampton is. So um, I've been very fortunate. And then to be a part of you know, Pico's faculty, being a part of the UAB um, institution. I mean, you have to learn very quickly that you've got to be a sponge in life, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you guys have learned so much from each other. How many people have learned from just your experiences every Wednesday from you guys sharing, even if you can get one or two pearls from each other, you know, in, in an app opportunity, it's you're one step ahead. So isn't that, isn't that the truth though, that Anything that you attend, you learn as much from the person sitting next to you as you do from the person in the front of the room. Absolutely. Absolutely. Always. Like it, it never, well, I mean, it depends where you go, but you know, when, when you really, when you attend really good CE, you're always going to be seated by somebody that is doing something that you're not doing or is, you know, enlightened on a, on a topic that you may not have exposed yourself to. So um, kudos to you for doing that. Thank you. Well, I also encourage everybody that's listening, though, that when you're going to those CEs, have the conversations, not during the presentation, right? But the side conversations. That's really where so much of the value is. Chad, I mean, when we had the opportunity at Seattle Study Club to get to know each other, you know, I learned 
little to what you were thinking. It wasn't just that you were moderating. I learned so much from you just from our slide conversation. So I really just charge everybody, make the most of those moments too, because what you're learning from the front of the room is amazing, but it's what you're learning from the peripheries that's mm -hmm. even can be so much more impactful. Well, and I, why I think I like, that. I love sorry. That. Yeah. Why things like this or other, you know, were, they were survival mechanisms when we put them in place because we were also isolated. And um, but now that you're starting to see in-person learning again, there's so much re-energizing of dentists, I think, and hopefully, you know, betterment and furthering our profession. And if nothing else, to everybody's point, mental health and well-being, because when we're in community with each other, we're sharing, hopefully we're being real and sharing the highs and lows and, and learning and getting lifted up. And maybe like Jen, you've been great about checking in with Chad and, you know, those types of things are impactful to people. And if we can continue to be very intentional about checking in after we attend these courses together, build these relationships and not just leave them at those single moments in time, if you will. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That being intentional, I love your terms, JB. It's just amazing. And also being true with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to be, how many of us have been more vulnerable now than ever? I mean, y'all yeah. have just put everything out there for everybody to learn about you. And that's, that's how people connect. Mm -hmm. And I think now more than ever, we have the opportunity to take our paths one way or another. And if you can truly learn how to make the most of every moment, y'all, I mean, that is, that's where the power is. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, Jennifer, I, I don't talk about this often, but you shared something that, that I, I think maybe explains why we, we connect, but, um, my, my mother passed away very suddenly at the same time that your father did. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny. I was thinking about this today, which is really just odd because we're going back. My mom passed away 2006 and my mom was my hero. I mean, we were very tight. I'm going to be the first to tell you I was a mama's boy, but there's not a day that goes by in my life that I don't come across. She wasn't even a dentist, but there's not a day that goes by that. I don't come across somebody that she's touched. And to me, that's a really special feeling. And so, you know, until in, unless Hampton takes over that practice, which, you know, God only knows what his plans are. He's probably going to be competing in the masters and we're going to be picking him as the winner in, you know, 10 years. But until Hampton takes over that practice in one way, either directly or indirectly through your career in that practice, your dad will have touched every single person in there, whether it's personally or through mm -hmm. you. So what a great story that, 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 thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. Absolutely. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, it's about leaving a legacy. Yeah. Right? And whether it's a legacy with your family, um, Jeff, you may know the term Lador Vador. It's a Jewish yes. term. I've heard that once or twice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> From generation to generation. And that doesn't just necessarily mean familial generation, right? It's your patients. Uh, we had a patient, y'all, we had a patient this week, didn't show up. We couldn't get a hold of them. Um, texted, it went busy. And you all have all been practicing for a while now. And you know, when those certain patients don't show up, you get concerned. And one of my team members went on and found an obit, you know? And so hmm. I say that because what we do is real. What we do impacts lives every day, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the legacy doesn't just end with your family. It may begin with your practice, your team, you know? So just, um, I think we just need to, like you just said, Chad, we just need to step back sometimes and realize the true impact and the most incredible profession that we're in, the true impact we have on lives each and every day. I love what you just said though, about Lador Vador. I mean, one of the, one of the brightest moments in my life was when my dad, my son at his bar mitzvah age, and, and I went to Israel together and we just had those moments and my son understood what, from generation to generation means and how important it is to kind of carry on good legacy and, and just, and, and good karma, even though that's not what we preach, but uh, you know, I think you have, you have exemplified that. So tell us, I, I want to hear a little bit about wise because you're really kind of carrying the torch forward and and bringing great things to a new generation of dentists so 
tell everybody a little bit about WISE and, and that group and what you're doing with that. So what WISE is, you know, most people don't realize this. There's approximately, depending on the numbers that you see, 53 to 54% of individuals graduating from dental school today are females. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that just, you know, blows a lot of people away when you hear that statistic. And yeah, actually, I, I wasn't that lucky. <laughs> I love it. Um, Jenny might have been a little more lucky had you had more <laughs> women in your dental school class. Well, and, and, and yeah, oh no, I love this, but no, I tell you, just like y'all have built a dink network, right? It's all about these networks and it, it goes again, it goes back to the legacy and, and making the connections and building the communities. Um, and so what wise is, is wise is women in, in implantology supporting and empowering. And it's actually become a global community. And I mentioned Steve Bogan earlier on, who's the president and CEO of, of BioHorizons Chemlog. Um, he had this vision years ago and he said i want to bring female clinicians female surgeons female prosthodontists female restorative dentists and implant dentistry into a network and so what wise is is this global community and y'all i had the opportunity it was so cool i got to talk to a whole um, network and a whole community in ecuador the other day virtually um i'm going in august to to speak to a group of, of um global clinicians and in um Bogota, Colombia. So what we're doing is we're building this network of women that are in implantology throughout the world. And it's really amazing. And so in May, Chad, you and I were talking about this. In May, there's the Oral Reconstruction Foundation Symposium, which is going to be in Orlando. And it's um, May 12th through 14th. And we're super excited because we're actually having a Y Symposium. And it's open to men and women. It's not that it's, it's, you know, um, separating out. But what it is, is it's basically an opportunity to network, just like you guys were talking about before. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. to have a conversation. It's an opportunity, JB, to say, JB, do you have, you have children, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. It's an like 17 of them. 17? Yeah. She's like the old lady in the shoe. <laughs> Right. So, so, but three kids, right? You're this amazing mom, <laughs> this incredible clinician, a wife, you do it all. Right. And that's just not easy. <laughs> and you're a dink. <laughs> and I'm a dink. That's actually the heaviest lift. She's the 43 year old <laughs> lady in a shoe. I am. I am. Be nice, Jeff. Come on. I can kind of still whip virtually. I know how to do it. <laughs> There's got to be a gift for that somewhere. I'm used to being told it in person. Out, so right? virtually is <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Right. But no, I mean, so what this is going to be, it's going to be an opportunity literally to have a conversation, right? We're going to yeah. sit around. We're going to have speakers. We actually have um, Mia Geisinger, who's going to be the upcoming president of the American Academy of Periodontology. Tara Agalu, who's the current president of the American um, Academy of Osseo Integration. So these incredible powerhouse women are going to be speaking from the podium. But then we're going to have an opportunity to literally just have a conversation with some of these key opinion leaders in the country, key opinion leaders in the world to say, how do you balance? JB, how do you balance your lady mm -hmm. in the shoe? You know, women in the shoe lifestyle, right? Yeah. How do you, I mean, listen, I was the one the other day between surgery, it was- I hope that doesn't stick by the way. I feel but bad. It may. Now. I'm gonna change my name. I'm afraid it's gonna stick now. <laughs> Be nice, Jeff, right? Um, no, but I was the one that was during my break time going to the grocery store, JB, to do, di you know, grocery shopping for dinner and then getting yeah. back into surgery again. Lady in the shoe. I love it. <laughs> I just want to be, I want to be temporal. You know, I want to be responsive. See, well, how you need to respond, JB, is you need to make Jeff do the, the nursery rhyme now. If he's going to say it, he's going to own up to it. Right? Go ahead, Jeff. Carry on. Can you do it? I can do it. He's going to okay. Google it first. Do it. I'm up to it. I'm not even going here. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tucker is so much, you, you know, Jerry. when you put that kind of fodder in my brain to work with, there you don't know what's going to come out. It's so not good. I'm just going to hand it back. Matt, I told you you're in trouble bringing me on. We're just going to banter the rest of the time. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no, I do love that because I think you're right. And I, um, I'm on the Facebook group, Mommy Dentist and Business too. And you see... A lot, like as much as they're posting about dental questions, they're posting a lot about how do we do all of this? How do we manage this? Do you have an assistant? Do you have a nanny? Do you do this? Do you do like, because there is a tremendous amount of negotiation when you're, sorry, boys, when you're female and trying to be a great mom and wife and 
dental owner simultaneously carrying the babies, having the babies, doing all the stuff. So um, I love communities voting together to sort of lift everybody up and be successful in that. And I think to your point, if dental schools are going to start accepting 50% of females into practice, we have to have support systems because Jeff and Chad have been really upfront with us. I mean, we've always talked about it's not the same. Maybe everybody. There's no way it can be. The, maybe somebody will disagree, but it is not the same. The same challenges that I have on a daily basis are just different. And, and they're all positive, but they are different. And so we have to have that community together to sort of, and hopefully lift up, not tear down. That's always that delicate balance um, when we have these communities together. But uh, I, I, I applaud you so much for doing that for women and, and in particular for clinicians who are trying to just be really good at all the hats that they're now having to wear on a daily basis. Sure. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because if we continue to elevate each other, mm -hmm. right, whether we're in multiple networks or individual, whatever it is, if we continue to elevate each other, I mean, that's only going to help us excel as a profession. And y'all, more than ever now, we have got to, you know, have one voice, right? I mean, we're seeing things, unfortunately, like we fought so long for dentistry not to be commoditized and we're... Yeah. People are trying to infiltrate that, right? And so, and groups are. So, you know, I think that the more you can do what you're doing right now, this network and, and these other networks, helping have a united voice, right? It's going to make such a difference because that way we can all still be on the same page and have these conversations. That's it. And if it's, you know, that's an excellent point because it's all about communities and leveraging that power. And it used to be it all sort of funneled through these organizations. It used to be all through the ADA, through the AGD, whatever it happened to be. But now you're seeing this really big web of folks participating in communities that mean something to them, that are impactful, and then leveraging those opportunities. And so we have to have collective conversation amongst all of those groups to make sure that we're sort of that united voice. And then that's what we talk about the news every week is to make sure, because it would be really easy not to know that these different bills are being brought up before the Senate or the House, or that the ADA is looking to fundamentally change the CDT code book. You could just be trucking along just fine and not know about any of those things that are happening that will directly impact how you do dentistry. And by the way, how we all get paid on a daily basis. So. We just have to continue to be engaged and I have to keep bringing it out here. The, the sad and the informative piece of the news for sure. Well, uh, another thing that we share that I think is really important that we talked about last night. And I think uh, I'd love to hear your take on this, but we talked last night about, you know, kind of your why and, and everything like that, but you're a huge uh, Simon Sinek follower and I am too. And so, um, you know, would you be willing to share why you feel that's so impactful and, and maybe, you know, why that message drives you? I, I keep saying why, but it seems cliche, but you know what I'm talking about. Well, Our Lady in the Shoe um, hit the nail on the head. I love the, the word that I truly live by is intention, mm -hmm. right? We have got to be intentional, whether it's a conversation you're having with your children, um, you know, a conversation you're having with your team, the, the treatment plan you're trying to present to your patient, you've got to be intentional about it. And Chad, you know, you mentioned Simon Sinek. I mean, you and I talked about, we were Simon Sinek fans before Simon Sinek was, was who he is, you know, the golden circle. And it's really developing your why. And why do, why do we do this each and every day? Why do we walk through the threshold of our practices each and every day? And when I speak, I love this. When I, when I saw you guys at Chicago Midwinter, when I spoke there, one of the most impactful things that I get to do from a podium is ask that question and then be deliberate about asking that question and let everybody just pause for a second and, and think about it. Because, you know, there's I, this is something I always bring up, you know, and I'll, I'll throw it out to you guys. What are the top three things our patients are really concerned with? Honestly, and, and it's I'm not trying to put you guys up to the test, but what would you say? And it doesn't matter if you're... Fourth, though, if you're a GP, if you're perio, what are the top three things that our patients are really concerned about? Money. Money. How do I look? What does it cost? Right. And um, okay. how much time is it going to take? Hundred percent, right? And what do they equate time to? Money. Money. Right. right. 
So Jeff, if you were my, my, we call it a, a new patient experience, right? I don't, I hate, I don't really like the word patient. Like we call you know, our patients are our family, but we call it a new patient experience. And one of the very first things we do is we tell Jeff, it's so great to meet you. We want you to know that you are here because we want to get you healthy in the shortest amount of time possible. So Chad, that's our why when it comes to practicing is we are here to get as many patients healthy as we can in the shortest amount of time that we can, because the longer time they prolong it, the more sick they become and they less actually willing to do it. I love that because I it's funny that I'm sorry to, I, I didn't mean to no, interrupt no, no, you, JB, no. but, but this is, so the first thing that I say to every new patient when they come in my office is. Let me just explain this maybe a little different from what you've heard before, but my job is to keep you out of this chair. How do we figure out what's wrong, not just what's wrong, but why it went wrong? And then how do we fix what needs to be fixed and then let you have a happy life without having to be in this chair mm -hmm. a lot of the time? Yeah. And, and if I've done that, then I've done my job as a clinician, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love the why. I, I'm, I'm a huge, huge believer in it. And I also love the new patient experience because mm -hmm. that's exactly what it's all about is, is creating an experience that makes them want to come back and makes them feel like family. That's, that's what I think. I think the four of us can entirely relate to that because, um, we talk about it all the time. I mean, that's, that's what patients get when they come to every single one of us is that, you know, they, they're, they're treated like family and they're treated like friends and that's what we always want it to be. And, and hopefully that's maybe the secret to our success. So. Jen, how do you currently divide up your time? How much are you in private practice? How much are you teaching? Like Great question. I was thinking that. What's maybe. this wheel look like? Yeah. <laughs> And give me pointers on how you manage it. But mostly what's the wheel look like? We'll I talk think this time. about every woman that is a mom, is involved in their kid's school, is involved in dentistry, is involved. I just, we bitch, but we have no right to bitch because we have half the shit that, excuse me, we have half the stuff on our Nine. plate that y'all do. said it first. And how do you do that? After eight. <laughs> no, listen, you know what? There's no panacea. You know, I can tell you, JB, what you may do is going to be totally different than what Chad may do and maybe totally different what Jeff may do. Um, I, I love the question. If you ask my team, they give you a different answer. And if you ask my family, they'd probably give you a different sure. answer. But um, I mean, listen, I, I've had the great fortune, y'all. I can't even begin to tell you. My office manager has been with our practice over 30 plus years, right? So she knew my dad. My mom is our um, controller, if you want to call her that. So I have such an incredible support system through the office. And then at home, I mean, JB, the reason I can do it is I get home. My husband loves to cook. I'm a miserable cook. If I cook more than probably two days, I'd probably put people in the hospital. And so therefore, you know, we it's a team. It's a partnership. And you all know this. You've got to have the support system, but you also have to be extremely respectful and appreciative for that support system because it can go away like that, you know? And so JB, I'm going to touch on something pretty tough. How many of our female colleagues do we know that had these great marriages and because that respect wasn't there because we were working so much, right? As women yeah. and saying we're doing it all. So many of our female colleagues aren't married any longer, mm -hmm. right? Is that a yeah. That's pretty accurate. That's absolutely fair. Yep. And I don't mean that. I don't mean any disrespect to any of our female colleagues or to the men, you know, in the room here, but we see it because I don't think that that mutual respect is there. My husband respects me. I respect him. You know, I'm very fortunate though, y'all, because he, since the pandemic, he's working through home and he's flexible. Mm -hmm. um, Chad, you and I talked, you know, you guys have probably had Todd on at some point. Um, you know, he's a certified financial planner, but the majority of his clientele are dentists. And so he understands the world that we live in. Not everybody has that luxury. Mm -hmm. um, for my schedule, mm -hmm. JB, what I do is usually if I'm going to lecture, I try to do it about only two times a month because then my son's got golf. I don't want to miss that. Yeah. Um, one thing I do a lot of is if I'm going to be lecturing, I'm going to try to pick a place where I can make an extended day and bring our, my son with me, you know, our son with us. 
Um, but usually I'll, I'll work through like a late, late through Thursday afternoon, fly out. Um, and if I'm doing a Friday program, fly back out that Friday night. Mm -hmm. Um, and you just kind of manage it, but you yeah. know, the, the longer I've been doing this, the more I'm, uh, I really choose what I'm going to do. Like on a Wednesday night, I could be with him, but I knew I had the opportunity to be with y'all, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna do that every Wednesday night. That's right. Right. So, well, well we were going to ask you to do it every Wednesday night. So. Uh, well, I mean, this <laughs> got awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went every other Wednesday night. There okay. You. Fine. 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 Actually, more but honestly, Wednesday. we, we do beat up on JB sometimes. So. Oh, you do hold your own pretty well. Yeah. For having like two idiots. Jake, if you, want, if you want a comrade, you let me know. I'll come back whenever you're ready. Exactly. I'm going to start bringing on another female dentist every week, even if they're not the guests, just as like additional armor. We're just coming in. Just give it to us, boy. I got we're you. Ready. Don't you worry. I got you. We're ready. <laughs> now just be over here making more babies. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You need yeah. A so, Jennifer, what do you have coming up? What do you have any any lectures or anything really cool coming up in the near future? Wow, good question. So now you're gonna make me have to go into like my calendar Rolodex here. Um, you can do that. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll we give you a minute. We could talk amongst ourselves. Talk amongst yourself. No, I you know I tell you what, as you guys know, doing the virtual platform has made life so amazing, right? It's so much easier. So I'm doing a webinar. Are y'all familiar with Weave? Yes. 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 Okay. So I'm doing a webinar actually on a lot of the conversation that we're having tonight, how to get your patients to say yes, okay. right? How to get them to own their disease is really what it comes to. My big thing is OWN, get your patients to own their disease. And that's not by asking like yes or no questions. That's like saying, you know, how often do you brush your teeth? How much do you smoke? Right? So getting your patients to say yes and own their disease. Um, so that's next week, next Friday. Um, and then let's see what else you could do your do 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 for a second, right? Your Jeopardy music. Um, gosh, I gotta think. I've got one other one this month. Um, let me think. You guys keep talking. I'll let hey, you know. I, I was gonna throw a name out there and just see if it rings a bell with you. Yeah, Tom Dudney. Oh my god, one of my favorite people on the planet. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Bama boy. Yeah. He is. Have you guys had him on the show? No, I love Tom. Well, we know Tom him from very Catapult. Close. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. You're, yes, yeah, we had that yeah. conversation. Yeah. A gem of a gem of a gem. Yeah. Amazing. And a phenomenal clinician. Yeah, yeah. He's. Did you, you all practice in the same city, right? Unfortunately, we don't practice in the same city. But if I've got a really, really highly aesthetic case, um, y'all know David Sarver as well? I do not. Yes. No. So you, you know him, Jeff? So David Sarver is a phenomenal orthodontist. So if I have a really strong ortho restorative case sometimes they're in the same area i'll send a case to them okay. um so yeah i mean unfortunately and then a lot of my colleagues that come in or friends that come in from birmingham i'll send to, over to tom he's amazing mm -hmm. absolutely amazing well i uh i i really enjoyed having you and we talked last night i know you briefly mentioned it but your husband todd and i have had a couple of direct messages back and forth and we'd love to get Todd on here because he does know dentistry as well. And yeah. you all are kind of a dynamic duo of, uh, of, of business and, and clinical. So um, uh, please, please give Todd and, and Hampton our best as well. I, I, I want to watch him play golf one day because I love seeing him on, on Facebook and Insta and just seeing how he's, he's thriving in his golf game. So. Well, y'all, that's what it's all about is making sure that our children and our families taken care of. You know, mm. at the end of the day, it really is. Yeah. All right, Chatty. Well, we're at 930. It went by really quickly. And Jennifer, I I could talk to you all night. We could all talk to you all night. Um, we're going to definitely bring you back. But Chad, I think you need to close us out because people don't want to really hang out with us past 930. Yeah, well, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and close this out. Uh, Jennifer, thank you very much. Um, Want to thank everybody for watching. I would also like to please encourage everybody to look for the deal tomorrow. Support Q Optics. Uh, Jennifer, you mentioned it earlier. You love your Q Optics. Uh, you know, I love that you just asked me that. So I, I was waiting to chime in. So two things: Tony Finau. That's my. That's going to be my. Oh, I almost picked him. Love him. 
Um, if y'all don't know him, we used to watch him on the big break. If y'all are big golfers, that's like an old timey show mm -hmm. that he actually got his big break on. And yeah, Q optics, y'all huge part of my practice. Um, every, you know, soft tissue case that I have, I've got my lights, my loops on, I wouldn't practice without them. So definitely, you know, this is a very, um, organic plug. I, absolutely. I, I, there's nothing more that I can say than get them if you don't have them. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, all right. So we got Tony Finau. I got Scotty Shuffler. Jennifer's got JT. Jeff, who you got? Well, um, did I miss something? Who do you have for the Masters? You know, I, I, I'm i going to go with my heart. I know Tiger's not going to make the cut, but I'm I'm betting on Tiger just because I want my Min Chem 10 card <laughs> <laughs> to be worth right. something. So, Tony, <laughs> Tony, the Tiger, uh, JT, and Scotty. And Bobby Pepper is putting out John Wrong. Yeah, I saw that. That ain't going to happen, Bobby. That ain't going to happen. All right, everybody. Yeah, what, what do you think? Does Bubba make a comeback? No. Oh. Okay, well, no. Hey, if you're gonna go to Bubba, so I got. I'll close you on this story. So my, I, I, probably my longest standing boyfriend at Georgia, right? He actually was a golfer. He was the only collegiate athlete that had ever had a heart transplant at the time. You guys have wow. to Google him. He's now on his third heart. He had to have another heart transplant, and then he made the tour on the PGA Tour. After like, oh my two, like God. Five times, yeah. And so Bubba Watson, that whole crew was that was his year. So these are all my good buddies. So I told Hampton one day, if you make it to the US amateur, I will make sure that Bubba Watson will be there. So Bubba, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, there you go. yeah, no, I mean, listen, golf, if y'all have not touched it, beware, right? But if you play it, what an incredible game for life. Yeah. And and everyone in their life should go to Augusta at some yes. point. Totally. It is even even my wife who hates golf went to the Masters and said that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And and absolutely loved it. You it is the pinnacle of of what golf is all about and and not even just that, just experiences the beauty, the Everything about it is just amazing. Well, Jeff, so. if you have a connection, you please let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go. I know. Bobby Pepper's on the show. <laughs> he has connections. Yeah. I know who to call. Yeah. I'm coming exactly. up. To you with Chad. It's not me, but Bobby Pepper hooked me up. It is not Chad. No, it is not me. All right. <laughs> yeah. Anytime if you can, Jennifer, and we're going to close this out.